Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming today and joining us here at the DNH uh, West Coast event. My name is Jeffrey Hunt. I'm an SE uh, supervisor for DNH Distributing, and joining me today is uh, Mark Jacobs. He is my counterpart on the Cisco side. Pretty much does the same thing that I do at DNH. So we're here to talk to you today a little bit about uh, Cisco Cloud solutions and particularly ones that fit in the SMB. So, Mark. Thank you, Jeff. So we'll dig right in. Uh, before we get to the slide, I seem like a little loud here. I'm gonna move my mic down. Uh, I'll ask you guys a question. Does anyone today have a current managed service practice or looking to get into a managed service practice? Got a couple of hands in the room. So all these solutions that we're gonna be talking today are going to fit that practice or that model. All the solutions today are 100% cloud-based. They have a subscription tied to it, and it's going to be very easy to deploy, install, and manage. So before we get into some of the content, why get into a Cisco cloud-based solution? Here are some of the main reasons. So if, as a partner, have a limited IT staff, and then going digital. So everything we talk about today, and this is a really big thing for Cisco, everything is based on an open ecosystem and open API. So all the data that is produced from these solutions can be pulled in to your homegrown applications, homegrown management applications that you use to manage your, your practice. So this is the biggest benefits of why we want it to get into the cloud solution. So as far as cost savings, right? Uh, there's a lot of cost savings. I'm sure you guys are familiar uh, with these cost savings into a managed service practice, but some of the Jeff is going to talk about Cisco Umbrella. Again, 100% cloud-based, and we can roll out security solutions in a matter of 10 minutes. There's not one other vendor out there that can say that today. Uh, we also announced a lot of different products in our collaboration product line. So if you guys heard of uh, WebEx Teams, WebEx Calling, WebEx Meetings, this is a collaboration unified plat platform that is 100% connected to cloud and subscription base. So the first solution that we're gonna talk about today, the Cisco Meraki Cloud Manage IT. How many of you guys have Meraki today deployed or are looking to deploy Meraki? Awesome. Another big differentiator with Meraki, it's a full stack management. That means we manage routers, switches, wireless APs, security cameras, and what now uh, system management. So we do endpoint protection on Meraki all through the simplified dashboard. So this is uh, simplifying across all IT with cloud management. Again, the dashboard is gonna have the full stack. So we have a very large customer base on Meraki and that's the reason why it's been so successful. And this is the product line. Kind of like I mentioned. So uh, hopefully everyone's familiar with this product line. There's a couple two uh, two new things that I want to kind of, kind of mention. On that. Um, MS switches. We recently released multi gig switches. Uh, Systems manager is going to be your mobile device management on endpoints. So if you guys have a customer that maybe a retail hospitality location and you want to control the devices that connect to the network, you can do that straight from the market dashboard using System Manager. So this is a full stack. Uh, of, of Meraki solutions in one simple uh, dashboard and very easy to use. So here's a quick overview of our product portfolio. I'm going to demo, demo this uh, dashboard for you guys so you guys get a real feel of what, what it looks like. So this is the MX security appliances. Right? Our MX security appliances are going to be firewalls and routers built in. We have next gen firewall capabilities. We have layer seven application and context filtering. All right? Um, we have some built-in SD-WAN features uh, that just been released a couple months ago. So we now, we now can do full SD-WAN out of Meraki. That means that one connection drops, it's a very easy switch over to your backup connection, and you can switch back over when that primary connection com comes back up. And back in the old days, it took a lot of configuration and a lot of time to configure that. We'd done a simple drop-down box. And you pick your WAN connections, and if anything kicks over, it knows where to go. Um, Meraki switches. So these are uh, our, our latest and greatest Meraki switches. Uh, these are layer three capable. And here are some of our uh, Meraki wireless access points, MRs is what we call them. Get some of these features right off the bat. Enterprise security on all of our MR, MR access points and location analytics, which I can show you real quick. We can actually determine how many people are connecting to our networks, how long are they dwelling for, and are they interacting with our networks in a certain way and our MV security cameras. 
And last but not least, system manager. So this is going to be your centralized kind of policy, right? If you guys are doing mobile device management, system manager is the kind of the way to go through sharing, central file sharing through a policy for all of my endpoints, which is really cool and really easy to deploy. So this is system manager, and this is going to be included in Meraki. Summary page can be emailed, can be exported out to, uh, with the data, you can export the data out to a different application or email on a scheduled basis. But this is gonna show you a summary of what's happening in a network, right? So uh, it picks out any anomalies in this first place, clients with high uses, so it has a pattern detection. So if you have a client that normally does a couple gig per month and all of a sudden he pops up to many more gig, it's gonna pick out that anomaly and saying, hey, you might wanna look at this client, it's doing something that's not usually in the pattern. All right, uses over time for your WAN bandwidth. You can actually see right here a timeline of your bandwidth. Maybe you're, you're not utilizing the bandwidth you could be using, or maybe you can drop down your bandwidth a little bit more because you realize that you're not using all the bandwidth that you have to save money, right? Um, so this gives a lot of data. Uh, kind of think of Meraki as kind of three layers, right? So you have your site layer or your network layer, then you have your device layer, and then you have your client layer. And this one page shows all three of those, of those pillars in a summary page. Any questions so far? All right. And here's, where I uh, here's Insight. This is your SaaS application as a service model. And this is a good overview of all the SaaS applications that you're running and what that performance looks like. So for example, uh, this use, we use Google Drive a little bit within Cisco. How is that performance and how am I connecting to Cisco? Everything is pretty much good in my LAN, WAN, on, on server side. So this is a very easy to use, very simple dashboard to kind of visually look at your applications and how they're performing. One other one I want to show you is Security Center. Oops. Since we're talking about security. Security Center is great. This is a overview in a month's time, and this is gonna show me all of my security vulnerabilities that I have on my network in a month. So as you can see, on a Meraki network, we still have a lot of security vulnerabilities over this time, right? So this is all the events over time, so you can see about 1,700 malicious type of threats happen in one day, so that's a lot. So I can see the pattern, seeing where it's coming from is another great, great thing. Here's on my blue Meraki networks. And I can see maybe this threat is coming somewhere in Europe, all right? I can also see what my most affected clients look like. So I can see this MX appliance in San Francisco is last affected by some kind of threat on March 28th. So I'm, that's something I definitely want to look at ASAP. I can also see the source of my threats. Where are my threats coming from, right? And it gives me the IP. I could click on any of these IPs, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna give me a lot more information to do a lot more research very quickly and very easily, all right? And one other thing I wanna show you on the wireless side is location analytics. And this is kind of showing you location-based traffic that is on my wireless network. So I have, a, I have a wireless AP here in the corner. How many people are connecting to it? How long are they connecting to it? And what are they doing when they connect? So you can see these passer buyers, so I have a Mark AP, there's about 6,000 uh, clients that actually pass by my AP. They're not physically connecting, they're just passing by. So if I'm in retail, that to me is opportunity of people I can market to, right? One other thing that I didn't mention that our wireless access points have is Bluetooth beacons. So that means if I'm walking by an AP and my Bluetooth is actually on my, on my mobile device, I can push, that, I can push a pop-up uh, notification to that smartphone. So marketing, uh, notifications, emergency alerts can all be done through our wireless APs. This is a really good option. And all this data, you can actually pull out of this platform and into your own platform. This is all open APIs. All right, so this is a really great feature. Um, and very easy to use as far as location. All right, now I'm gonna kick it back over to Mr. Jeff. Jeff's gonna talk about Umbrella. Here you go. So, quick show of hands. How many people here have heard of Cisco Umbrella? Okay, for those of you that have not, how many of you have heard of OpenDNS? All right, that's more. 
So Umbrella is basically the rebranded version of OpenDNS. When Cisco purchased OpenDNS, that's what they changed the name to. OpenDNS still kind of exists. Uh, it's considered more of like the personal home platform type thing, but Umbrella is more of the enterprise version of it. So, quick show of hands, how many people have customers that use DNS? <laughs> okay, come on. Everybody's gotta put a hand up for this. Cisco has a unique look at this. Because with OpenDNS and Umbrella, they have the ability to see 175 billion requests per day going through their system now. That 90 million daily active users, last I checked, it's actually up more towards 105 now, uh, is what they're seeing every day through their DNS. Uh, 15,000 enterprise customers all over the country. They've really expanded it and taken it further now today, before it actually starts to cross the threshold of your firewall. So again, that's kind of how it works in that it's out there in the cloud. It can work with mobile devices. It can work with your laptop. Uh, it can work with your next generation firewalls. The Meraki piece is now integrate with OpenDNS. Even if you don't own a Cisco router, okay, you don't have to own a Cisco router to use Umbrella or OpenDNS which is one of the great features of this security tool, is that again, you don't have to have any other investment in Cisco to start to use this product. And it complements any product on the security side very, very well. Again, because you're getting that protection before it actually hits you. The other big part of this is because things have changed and we don't have everybody living behind the firewall anymore, and we have people with mobile devices and they're doing work at Starbucks and they're doing work in hotels uh, and all over the place. Because of that, it gets harder to create policies to control these, uh, what these people are doing. You are creating your policies in the cloud and then it's just a simple matter of installing the client on devices or pointing the DNS of those devices to the umbrella IP addresses. That's it. It is very easy. It is very simple to set this up. It's probably the simplest security piece you can implement. And even if you don't create profiles right away, even if you just get it installed, stood up, and start pointing your DNS to it, you're immediately going to see the benefits of it. Because we're stopping things at the point of exit from the system. Because OpenDNS sits there and monitors that, OpenDNS was aware of what those URLs were. So even if your device had gotten WannaCry loaded on it, it would fail because OpenDNS would not allow those URLs to execute. So it would, in essence, block the application from being able to go and pull those encryption keys down to operate. Because malware doesn't just come out of the blue anymore. Every Cisco device that's out there gets a great view as to what's happening out there. So anytime something happens or starts to happen or somebody starts to test the latest malware or somebody's out there trying to build the new system because they use URL calls just like everybody else does now, it's starting to see that. It's starting to learn that. It is getting you ready to help prevent when those attacks launch. And it prevents connections from just about anywhere. If you look at email, where do a lot of email threats come in? Because they'll make the email look really, really pretty. Apple sends me an email every day telling me they're about to charge me 500 bucks for stuff that I order. All right, in which case the first thing I do is I log on to my bank account and make sure that there's not $500 missing. Actually, that's the second thing I do. The first thing I do is I call and threaten my children to see if they bought it. <laughs> Once I've cleared that they have not bought anything, I check, it's not there, I ignore the email. But it's the links in the email that they are trying to get you to click on. And again, Umbrella, when you click on those links, recognizes those URLs and will take steps to stop them. Some of those emails are pretty convincing. Because again, 
the threats are not just happening. They are tested. They are out there. They have landing sites. They have sites. Umbrella can see if a new site comes online. So again, as threats are being born, when WannaCry was being written, its behavior was already being observed. So by the time it was actually ready to go, it was already being blocked in most instances through Umbrella. 50% conversion rate on it, but go out there, sign up for your free trial uh, and start using it. You'll really like it. And again, you can set up all the pieces if you want. If you don't want to go that far, you can still get the protection just from what it does at base by pointing your DNS servers to the umbrella DNS. Let me get, let me get it. Let's look at a slide over. So this is the basic interface of Umbrella. This is what everybody gets. In here is where you can come and start to set up your policies and create uh, the networks and establish all these different ones for your customers to start getting feedback as to what's going on on the network. And a lot of the reporting is, uh, is really neat. And that's what I'm going to focus on here since we don't have a ton of time. But we're going to talk mostly about the reporting. I'm going to have to hit not now on your password. Hmm? Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to look at is security activity. This is a place where you can come in and see what exactly has been happening on the network. Has there been any problems? And the nice part about this is all you have to do is go into a customer and point their DNS numbers to this site. And you can show them literally within a day What's happening on the network? Are there any problems? I can come and I can look at it holistically. It doesn't look like there's much going on uh, in the last 24 hours. But there was definitely an, uh, something blocked here the previous day, yesterday. It tells me what's been blocked. It tells me what the destination was. And it tells me specifically who did it or what device on the network uh, caused that particular problem. If I want to, I can just look at everything that's blocked. <clears throat> and now you can see there's a much larger list. <clears throat> These are things that were allowed. That is gone. But you can actually go back and see just things that have been blocked uh, within the period of time that you're looking for. Some of the other things that you can see within Umbrella is you can actually take a look at applications, because a lot of things today are application based. So you can come in here and you can start to see some of the things that it's starting to see on your network, things that it knows that aren't good, things that it knows are bad, and things that it's going to give you the option to decide if you want to let happen or not. Uh, in this particular case, you can see here that uh, box office was on there and it has a high, uh, both of these have very high uh, uh, ranking filters on them. So this, you can start to see that there's five uh, applications on here that were games. There's categories. Not everything is necessarily bad. Some of these things are categorized as time wasters uh, for companies that are trying to block uh, people from using different uh, time killing applications on their website. You can get a breakdown of how often it sees these things. Uh, 
by the risk, uh, how many things are being caught here. You can pull the details up. And you can start to see everything in here. And it gives you the option of whether you want to let these happen or not. So again, the things that it's seeing, that it doesn't know, that it doesn't understand, it's at least informing you of what they are, giving you the option to come in here to decide if you want to let those things uh, continue on, such as box storage. There's a high threat level with it because, again, people can use it to transfer information in and out of companies, and it's not always something that you have a lot of control over. So again, you have the option to come in here and approve the application to be run, you also have the option to block or not approve that application. And the key here is because you have people that are running around with iPhones, you have people that are running around with desktops, they're in a lot of different places, a lot of different locations, it's hard to create a central control for everybody. Because of the cloud interface and the fact that you are creating these policies and you're running the application and you have uh, the single profile point, it doesn't matter where their device is. It doesn't matter if they're using it at home or Starbucks. What you can do is you can make sure that your firewall is running the same set of rules that the guy that's on his phone who's out at Starbucks is also running. So it makes it really easy to centrally manage all those pieces. And then Mark's going to talk to you about AMP. AMP. Thank you for that, sir. All right, so the next solution we want to talk about is what we call Cisco AMP, Advanced Malware Protection. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been dealing with uh, malware these days. Uh, it's very prevalent in the market today, uh, but there's a reason for that, right? So here, here's come some, some of the facts here. So 95% of uh, down social security numbers in a matter of 20 minutes. But I can literally download social security numbers for a dollar. I can get mobile malware development for me for $150 an hour. Uh, if I wanted to develop some kind of virus or malware, I can actually call a support hacker, pay them hourly rate, and they'll develop some kind of custom threat uh, for my uh, organization I'm trying to uh, hack. So this is why so, it's so prevalent, right? So the market for this, as far as a monetize, uh, uh, monetary value, is about $450 billion to uh, $1 trillion. Very low barrier, uh, low barrier to entry to get into this market, right? Uh, so this is why malware and big threats are so prevalent these days on our network. And it all starts with Talos and how we protect it. You heard us mention Talos. All right, so let's get more into AMP, right? So AMP is for malware. Um, how many of you guys have worked into in a NOC or Network Operations Center before? Have you ever walked in the morning and see all these red flags and seen all these possible threats and you're like, what do I do? Right? So how do we take back control of our time? With AMP, we can identify malware or malicious traffic, not in days, in hours. I think it would be about three to four hours as to find a threat. We can proactively hunt for the riskiest 1% of threats. How many other vendors out there say we block 99% of threats? Well, what about that 1%, right? That 1% is what's really dangerous and what's getting through. With advanced malware protection, we can block that 1%. And we can find and fix the most valuable endpoints before compromise. So even if a endpoint or a network device is not patched to the latest and greatest updates, we can recognize the, the malicious patterns with Talos and push down the patches up to that, to that endpoint. This is a cloud-based an analytics. All right, so all of our AMP uh, cloud data is going to connect to Talos. Uh, we didn't talk a lot about ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid is a uh, management for all of our security solutions. But AMP, Umbrella, our next-gen firewalls can all connect to ThreatGrid if you want that central plane of glass. But, you know, my father has a small business, uh, a small printing business. And unfortunately, since I work for Cisco, I'm his IT guy. And he recently got hit with ransomware. Um, and uh, it took a lot of his very, very important data. And do you think we paid the, the Bitcoin to get that data back? Absolutely, we did. Probably one of the be best things to do, but there's really nothing else. He didn't really have another option, right? So uh, ransomware is very, very prevalent, and advanced malware protection will protect against ransomware. So if you guys are seeing a lot of ransomware out there, advanced malware protection will, will definitely fix that for you guys. Right? 
So any of these clients will uh, get what we call a security connector. That security connector will connect back to Talos, or Advanced Malware Protection Cloud. So that, that connection now brings that device the latest and greatest updates. So it's fully protected. However, if one of your devices are not part of these operating systems, we have what we call the Advanced Malware Protection Proxy. So if you're trying to protect VoIP phones, HR database record, AMP would say, this is not supposed to be happening. Happening, We're going to block that traffic so that IP phone can't get any of, uh, of that data that it can be potentially hacked. Uh, another good story is the target hacked. Um, everyone familiar with the target hack recently, about two years ago, maybe about a year, year and a half ago. The reason that target got hacked is the hackers actually found a vulnerability on the HVAC systems. So they had an HVAC system that was IoT based, and the hacker, the hacker found that an opening through the HVAC system, and he actually got from the HVAC system into HR corporate records and was able to get all the username and passwords. If he had a policy base saying, hey, our uh, HVAC system or IoT device is not so, supposed to be talking to this database, uh, it would have stopped that traffic. And it's a very simple fix. Uh, but however, Target was unfortunately enough not to have advanced malware protection. All right, uh, that was quick. Any questions on Cisco advanced malware protection? There is a, a, a free demo on there uh, on Cisco dCloud. If you haven't heard about Cisco dCloud, Cisco dCloud is uh, our platform on Cisco that has all the demos of all the solutions and all the products we talked about today. So even Umbrella, WebEx, uh, AMP, if you guys want to see a demo, just go to cisco.dcloud.com and you guys will have full access to a lot of these solutions we talked about today. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Cisco Web uh, Jeff for Cisco WebEx. So from the cloud perspective, we talked a lot about managing infrastructure through the cloud with Meraki. Uh, we talked about managing security through the cloud because AMP, again, uses an interface in the cloud much like Umbrella does. So the last place that we're going to go here is our friend Collaboration. Collaboration, Cisco WebEx Teams is what you're going to hear the most discussion. Uh, how many of you have walked into a conference room and spent the first five to ten minutes trying to figure out how to get something to come up on the screen? Projectors, that nightmare. The little string of things sitting in the middle of the table with the 18 adapters and somebody took the one adapter off the table that that person needed and now they're scrambling around trying to find you know, a, a mini display port to an HDMI connector somewhere in the building. Those are the kind of experiences uh, that collaboration can sometimes make complicated because there's a lot of different pieces to it and there's a lot of different interfaces. And that's what Cisco has set out to tackle through their cloud solutions. Being able to give you the ability to stack on top of what WebEx had started some time ago. You had WebEx, which gave you the ability to do meetings. Well, they've taken that and they've added in the ability to do other things with it as well. Calling. I can now manage my WebEx teams and my calling service. application on any of my devices so that I can have conversations a step beyond regular instant messaging but I can do all of these things now all within one interface all within the WebEx meetings platform and that's huge and one of the big things that we've been talking about lately and seeing is actually the aspect of video video conferencing video has gotten more and more invasive in everything that we've been doing. So video gives us the ability to not just hear conversations, but actually see and read body language and have experiences. And Cisco has always made traditional telepresence solutions. They're usually big, they've always been massive, they've always been expensive. Uh, to implement, to be able to give you the full room meeting view of different locations. What if you wanted to go into a room and you wanted to sit your laptop down and you could use that same application to just throw the screen up on the television or the telepresence solution or the WebEx meetings board, the new piece that they have. Keeping that all simple 
keeping it the same interface the whole way through here. That's what this is about. And then easily within that same solution, bill them if they decide that that's what they want to do. So again, everything's within this platform. And Cisco's major push here is to make it a unified experience regardless of what you're buying. And it happens at all levels. From the WebEx share, this device is about that big. Then you have the room kit minis, and we actually have one of these set up on the floor that you can see. These are really cool because they are a single piece that you can install on any television and make it a video collaboration experience. You don't have to buy a large uh, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a high-end telepresence solution for a huddle room. These are priced to go into those smaller rooms. These are designed to be easy to install, HDMI plug-in, Ethernet plug-in, some power. Uh, there's a nice little display that goes on them for doing your dialing and everything. They are simplified. And then if you want to go to the next step, you have the Spark board. Can I say one thing about the WebEx Mini? Yes. Uh, we are open on the WebEx Mini, meaning this is third-party compatibility. If you want to do video conferencing with Skype, uh, Zoom, it'll work with the WebKit Mini, which is a huge deal. HDMI if a call comes in. So again, you have a lot of flexibility with the WebEx room kit and it really brings the cost of this down to something uh, that SMBs can afford. And then again, you have the WebEx board. I called it the Spark board earlier. That's okay. That. <laughs> the WebEx board, which allows you to do all this stuff and it allows you to do whiteboarding as well. So again, all different kinds of experiences for what you're looking just small little collaborative rooms to do video conferencing and calls and such. And then again, if you need to go the full scale, you need to do whiteboarding. That's where the WebEx board Good job. <laughs> comes into play. <clears throat> that is all that we had for the presentation. Mark, do you have anything to add? Uh, I think I'm good. Any, any questions out there? Yes, sir. You want to take that one? So yeah, so on it's, yes, it, it's basically another product. It's a license that you purchase through DNH. There's a couple different levels of it. Uh, if you contact our Cisco uh, business unit or your sales rep at DNH, they can get you a list of what the pricing is and what the SKUs are. Again, once you go in and you set up your interface, your interface is your interface at that point. Where so, do you set up? Oh, you can just go to Umbrella, or it's dashboard.umbrella.com. Yep. And does it see all of my clients? Do you, or is it, like if I have 50 different clients using this um, Umbrella, do I see all of them in there? So you will see them if they are using Umbrella as the DNS piece. There's two parts to Umbrella. If you just put it in as your DNS, it's going to see clients that are coming to it. So it's going to see anybody that's utilizing the DNS. If you're using it as the DNS uh, extender in all of your Wi-Fi, like if you have a guest Wi-Fi and you're using DHCP and handing it out, it's going to see everybody that grabs it and uses it. The second part of it is that there is a piece you can install on the devices. It works with iOS, uh, I think Chrome's out now, Android. Um, and laptops. Once you install that piece on, you can get an even deeper control of what's going on. You can start to see more, and there's a lot of cool features that you, know, you need to have that client piece installed on, but just to get the basic protection out of it, you just point the DNSs. I was kind of after the same thing. What, uh, that was a good question. The question is, is it MSP friendly? Meaning, if you have multiple tenants, multiple sites, do they all roll up uh, into the dashboard so that you can tell them from site to site, or is it you can create multiple policies with it to assign to different people. If that's kind of what you were asking, what was? No, what? so as, a, as an MSP, if you had 50 different customers, 50 different okay. companies, when you look at it in the dashboard, would you see the 50 companies and then grow your way down? So yes. Or does it combine them as one large set of IPs across all 50 customers? 
yes, it will distinguish the individual companies as you break it out. There is an extra piece that you have to get into if you're an MSP uh, in order to activate that capability, uh, but there is a way to do it. Yes, the Absolutely. dashboard does that. As an yeah. MSP, are we able to, like, we can provision as much as we want, it scales with us through that portal, like a SaaS-based software, so we're just, when we need another license and we need to deploy it, we have that agility, or do we have to buy licenses, have them in an inventory that we're paying for that are sitting around? Or what, what, how does that work? That is being developed right now. All right. So that is coming. Yeah, kind of uh, as you pay as you go, grow. Yes. Type that, of model. How quickly can we have provision stuff when we need it? Okay. Up to you guys. What's your turnaround time? Provisioning that? Yeah. And can we give clients, like if we have an IT department that we're up doing staff augmentation for something like that, that we want to give them access to the portal, but only see their read site. Only. Do they have that ability to only have access to their site? So there, there is some capability of that today. Uh, it's not as extensive as it could be right now. Again, that is something that is still being developed. So are you guys developed. working on the MSP? Piece yes. Still? Yes. Yes. The MSP for Umbrella, uh, there is a variation of it there that exists today. Uh, but it is currently under heavy reconstruction right. uh, going forward. So that's, yeah. If it, you were invested in, like, if we got started now and that changes, um, and that changes, then when you guys make this roll up to this new changes, would all of our stuff pipe right over to Absolutely. it? Or is it going to have to be, like, deprovision, reprovision, and set it up in the new portal? It's going to be a seamless transition to seamless. the new portal. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. There is a MSP portal that the partner would have to re, uh, require another specialization uh, that we're trying to get rid of that. We're trying to just say, hey, if you guys are MSP, here's the portal, but right now there's an extra step that we're trying to eliminate. Umbrella is really being, uh, the MSP play for Umbrella is really under a lot of reconstruction right now, and it's, you, you'll hear about it shortly, but it's, it's, still, it's, being, uh, it's being worked on. It's being worked on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So do, let me understand this. So if I have a number of customers, they use the same DNS as I have all the time, so I can see them under the umbrella? You would use umbrella DNS. Okay. So you point your clients to the um, umbrella DNS? Umbrella DNS. And as long as they're pointing to the umbrella DNS, they'll be under your portal. So you okay. can see what's going so on. So you sign them up under your portal? Yes. Correct. As long as they're pointed to the umbrella DNS that's assigned under your okay. portal. Yep. Yes, sir. Isn't that going through with the agent? If they point to the DNS, there is no way of identifying that DNS. Yeah, that's right. It's only with the agent base that you get anything that's definitive because that's on the individual machine. You know, you're talking about two different yes, things. And one is the agent base, which can identify the system. Mm -hmm. Where it's going, regardless where it's at. Okay. And then pointing to a DNS server, okay, I don't know who's being pointed to it. You know, the person so that is true. With that, I don't know who he is. Yes, if it's a DNS yeah, request, it's just another connection. It is just another it's connection. It's another connection. another connection, and you can see that there's a new connection coming Correct. in. But you can't get. Okay, so you take your laptop and go to a coffee shop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Point to a DNS. Um, umbrella's DNS. It's so, umbrella's yeah, DNS. you're. Umbrella's DNS, but that's going through another ISP, another connection, another IP, public IP. You don't know who it is. You, you can assign. A, Looking back, you can't see who that is without the agent installed. Looking. That is correct. You can see that it's a connection, but you won't be able to find out. Uh, Deep details on the agent. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. It, it'll register it as a connection, but it won't register it as. But you won't know whose company it belongs to. Yeah. That's clear. But how how is it determined what company? So when you sign up for Umbrella, um, you'll get access to that portal and a DNS IP for your Umbrella portal. So what you do to the client is say, okay, he's using this DNS today. I'm going to switch out his DNS to point to my portal. And once I point to my portal, uh, I can see all the possible threats under that client, under that portal, under that company. 
That's with an agent. That's with an agent. That's what without an agent, all you're going to see is connections. You're not going to get deep analytics on that client. It's just a connection. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? We, let's, let's talk in, uh, uh, back at our booth and we can give you more information on that. Yes? Uh, good question. Uh, you, there's different policies you can set. So uh, if it, there's an administrator, you can give them administrator access to remove the policy. But if it's just going to be a regular typical user, you, you block that. Good question. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a fantastic question. Uh, that's something we didn't show. Uh, yes, absolutely. It works with Umbrella and AMP. So under the organization settings, you can put the uh, API strings into an umbrella and AMP. So everything is in Meraki. That's a great question. It's under the organization settings. As a matter of fact, Meraki has just implemented uh, in the most recent codes, it has implemented an integration directly with umbrella yep. in their access points. So that their access points will now connect to your umbrella cloud and it'll bring down the same policies that you can now uh, enforce on clients. And one, one one other thing, all of our SPTG products too will connect to Umbrella. I think it has to be a certain version. It has to be a yeah. certain code. There has to be a code level running on it in order for it to uh, be in the dashboard. Uh, we have it set up at the booth. I can show it to you if, if you want to see it there. I think we're over. Yeah, that's a good question. Any other questions? I think we got two minutes. No more umbrellas, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a few at the booth. Um, for the agents and like yeah. a hot, uh, hot, uh, you know, hot shop and such, usually they, re, um, they report when you log in, they'll pop up a web page and you have to log into that first. How do the agents handle that? Is that an IP address? Is that the, its own, you know, the hot, the hot shop DNS look up? But if the agent is trying to go out, but it can't, So if I have a portal, I'm logging into that portal. I can Why can't the portal be just assigned to the umbrella DNS? Well, doesn't the umbrella DNS take the answer So it has to look up that. Oh, the portal. I see what you're saying. Oh, that would have to be internally. I think that's an internal issue. We have to set your internal DNS. Yeah, no, point I, back uh, to it. I have to check I, let me think about that. that. That's a I really good I point. I use it, and I've not run into any issues with I it. Ha I have not had experience with the, with the portal as well, with the uh, Wi-Fi portal. I, I, I know exactly what you're referring to. Um, let me just think through that. Okay. Any other questions? Cool. Don't forget to stop by our booth. Uh, we definitely have some uh, extra goods as well. If you guys want to have conversations, we can speak to anything in more detail. Uh, but thank you for your time. Thank you for joining and have a great rest of the day.